Very few people believe that Washington wouldn't bring, you know, Cameron Curl back on a new deal this offseason. I know I, for one, expected, you know, something to happen, even if it was them waiting to see what the market was. But if you believe the reports that have came out, uh, Washington not only didn't bring him back, they reportedly didn't even offer him a contract, which on the surface, that seems kind of crazy. But honestly, I feel like a part of this story is missing. Obviously, the team is not going to tell us all the details, but uh, I have heard a few rumors, and I was following his dad on Twitter when all this went down. And, uh, you know, he appeared to be pretty pissed when the team didn't wish him or wish Cam a happy birthday. Uh, and he deleted his Twitter a couple days after that. I think that he had some, some, some backlash from the fan base, people telling him, you know, maybe he was hurting his son or whatever the case may be with some of the tweets he was putting out. But he, he deleted his Twitter. And when he came back, he unfollowed me. So, you know, I returned the favor, which is neither here or there. But uh, he also said Washington offered more than L.A. did, which could be, you know, sour grapes from him. Or it could be the complete truth. But uh, but whatever, you know, Cam signed a two-year deal for $8.75 million that will inflate to $12.75 million if he hits all of his incentives and bonuses and you know, I wish him the best, but um, that's a long way from 16 to 17 million a year. You know, the thoughts that were being put in our head from the contract experts over at uh, over the cap and spot track where, you know, they were predicting what the market was on him. But right before free agency began, Cam himself, you know, tweeted this out, which kind of signaled to me that he was just getting ready to leave. Now, I may have missed a couple of the tweets. A friend of mine said that he uh, that, that Cameron Curl tweeted out a few times after he signed with L.A. And it kind of appeared like he was trolling the fan base or he was trolling the team, one of the two. But anyway, from, from everything I've seen, it looks like the Curls, you know, as a group and the team must not have been on the same page in terms of his value. I'm seriously thinking the team wanted him to go out and test the market you know, to kind of see what, what offers were out there or what he was going to get, you know. And, and I think that the curl camp may have taken that as a sign of disrespect. You know, it didn't help his case much either that the free agency pool for safeties, you know, that market exploded. Um, given Adam Peters a whole bunch of cheaper options that they actually, they've said, they believe felt fit better if you believe reports, as I said before. And of course, this regime is not tied to any of the moves made by Ron Rivera, made by the, the regime before them. So they're going to look for the better deals. They're trying to rebuild a four-win roster. But at any rate, you know, uh, at the end of the day, Cam gets a whole lot less than just about everybody thought he would. And Washington moves on from homegrown talent, which I hate to see, but, you know, it happens sometimes, you know. Um, you can't overpay at a position where upgrades can be had for cheaper, you know. And we're talking about a position here that Washington actually does have some decent quality depth that, you know, and they have Derek Forrest who's, who showed he can do his thing. And they got Percy Butler back there who's shown that he can do his thing, you know. And, and, and you know, Butler will definitely get his chance to step up now. And I think that they'll maybe even look towards the draft to add one more piece at that position but also believe that they feel like, you know, Jeremy Chin is a good enough fit that maybe they don't have to go out and search for another guy. I do feel like that Derek Forrest has already showed what he had, and uh, that injury cut his season short last year. And although they don't have any ties to anybody, you know, necessarily on the roster from the Rivera era, he still is under contract, and he actually has shown that he can play the position pretty well. But the question, you know, it's still going to remain after all that the dust clears. Was this the right move? And truth is, only time will tell. We can sit here and debate it and say if it was smart or say if it wasn't. But only time is going to tell us. We don't know how, you know, good of a player that Cam Curl is going to turn into. And we don't know what Washington's going to do at the safety position. Now, one thing I could say for sure, though, because I've watched a whole lot of Cameron Curl film and I was honestly going to make a video about him in the coming at least weeks. But Cam brought something to the field that doesn't exactly always show up on the stat sheet or, you know, maybe jump out on the film. With him, it's it's kind of less about the highlight reels and, you know, more about 
you know, how bad that secondary was when he wasn't on the field. There was a massive dip uh, in the defense's play when Curl was off the field. You know, it, but still, it's hard to not notice the overall lack of interceptions for Cameron Curl. You know, kind of off in my opinion that he only has three picks in his entire career and that all of those came inside of his rookie season. Now, looking at the grand scheme of things, you know, he did also add 14 passes defensed or broken up, uh, two fumble recoveries, and he had five sacks to go along with 385 tackles which broke down to 257 solo tackles and 15 for loss and 60 games, which was 53 starts for him. And for a seventh round pick, that's really good value. I just feel like there is a part of this story missing. Maybe it's that Rivera had kind of told this kid they were going to take care of him. And then, you know, the new regime comes in, a new owner and everything, and they don't. But I have nothing but good things to say about this guy. Like, you know, ever since his rookie year, he's came in. He's shown that he can get it done on the football field. At the end of the day, for me, I thought this guy was going to be on the roster, you know, long term and end up retiring in the Burgundy and Gold. So looking at it from that point of view, it kind of sucks. But at the same time, this game is a business. It's not like how it was 15, 20 years ago. It's all about the money now. You know, and if he can't get it here, he's going to go elsewhere and find it and regimes have to find a way to bounce back and bounce back quick at multiple spots, you know, sometimes year in and year out, especially for teams that end up with a big name quarterback that have to pay their quarterback big time dollars to keep them. And you end up seeing, you know, a lot of their players end up getting cut for salary cap purposes. You know, Washington hasn't had to really deal with that for a while now, you know, paying this astronomical price for a quarterback, you know, now that it's ballooned up into the 30, 40 million a year range for quarterbacks and some of them are getting higher than that which is unbelievably ridiculous those inflated quarterback salaries is actually what led to the safety market that led to cameron curl not getting the contract that he wanted teams have to cut costs when they pay their quarterback top dollar it just happens that this year happens to be the year that safety has taken a step back in terms of getting paid